what is going on guys on my instagram i asked you guys what kind of tutorial you wanted to see next and basically you all said mixing and mastering so here we are today doing mixing and mastering in logic first of all I mix my tracks along the way. I don't wait till the very end of the project to start mixing. So with every sound that I add, I start leveling. And that is probably the most important thing to do because you don't want to have to save it for the end because then you're already over it. Like, over it. And you're on to the next beat. And you're like, forget mastering. Who needs it? Not me. As you can see on this track, I don't really have a lot of effects going on. Ignore these three tracks right here. They're empty. I don't... I had something and then I took it away. So just don't worry about these three. Let's focus on this. So on my guitar, I used Guitar Rig because I didn't have my guitar hooked up to an amp and I didn't record that way. So I used Guitar Rig as my pedals. And then I put some EQ on the guitar to take out some of the muddiness of the lows. So the guitar didn't have like a lot of bass in it. I wanted it to sound more clean and more clear. So I'll just show you what that sounds like before and after the effects. So here are the guitar parts without any plugins or effects. So it's really flat, which isn't always a bad thing, but it's just not the vibe of the song. So add the guitar rig and add some EQ. And this bus right here is reverb. And on my reverb, I usually take out the low end so it's not muddy. So here's the guitars with all of the effects and the reverb. As you can see, those plugins really brought out the harmonics of the guitar. It just has a brighter tone, so that was the vibe. Moving on to the kick, I usually mix everything to my kick, so the kick is the loudest sound in the song. On the kick, I take out the highs. I want the kick to sit in the low, the low end of the mix, so that's why I do this little mix here. Sometimes I do take out some right here. If it's too punchy, I don't want it to like sound like someone's knocking on my door. After the kick, we go to the snare. Same EQ. EQ out some of the lows. EQ some of the highs out. Moving on to the clap. Same thing, and the hi-hats take out a lot of the lows because it is a hi-hat, therefore it needs to sit in the high of the frequency spectrum. And then the Vox hits, which I have absolutely zero EQ on, so that was easy enough. Just took it down the levels about six decibels. I do want to note on the snare and the clap, I did offset the pan on both of these, so the snare is hitting more towards the left, and the clap is hitting more towards the right. And after all that, after you get your levels right and everything, it's time to go to the mastering. The most important thing about mixing and mastering is your ears. A lot of people get lost in the analytics of it all and like, how much should I cut? Or how much shouldn't I cut? And where should I cut? It really, that's not the important part. You should use your ears to the best of your abilities and whatever sounds the best to you since it's your art, then that is what you should do. I personally only use Ozone 8 for my mastering, which is this plugin right here. And this is the effects chain that I use. I don't know what this is, so please forgive me. <laughs> but I start with the equalizer, then the dynamics, the exciter, the imager, and the maximizer. You can do all of these functions in Logic Pro if you don't have Ozone already. So let me just go through what plugins you would use in Logic if you didn't happen to have Ozone 8. You would use some channel EQ, linear EQ, you're going to add a multipressor, and then an exciter, and an imager, but it's called a stereo spread in Logic. And then last 
last an ad limiter. This ad limiter has to be last in your signal chain. Otherwise, your mix will sound like trash. So the limiter is last, so your beat don't sound like trash. Words of wisdom. Okay, now that we've gone through all that, I'll try to explain to you what each of these do. And I'll do it in a chain so you can hear the difference every step of the way. So first things first, channel EQ. On this, I took out some of the lows on the side so that the, the low end of the mix will sound better overall. So here's what it sounds like without this. Unsolo these so you can hear the whole track. you can hear it very well but it it's there when you hear like the lower ends of the frequency spectrum hitting in this beat it's cleaner when you take out some of the side and then after you do that go to your linear EQ and take out a little bit of the mid-range and a little bit right here vocals usually sit in the 500 to 2000 Hertz range so it's important to kind of take away some of those frequencies when you're mixing so the vocals will be able to cut through the mix a lot better. And this is what that sounds like with. I won't do it without because you already heard it without. Okay, so the multipressor, I'm sure at first glance this could look intimidating, but it shouldn't because you don't really have to mess with a lot of this stuff, honestly. There's going to be that one pretentious person in the comments that says, you're not using that to your full capabilities, Courtney. I'm going to be like, I don't use it at all, but so on this beat, I took out some low end. Uh, took about a little bit of mid and added a little bit here and added a little bit to the highs. So here we go. It sounds muddy without the multipressor, but when you add the multipressor, it, it brings out the, the highs of the song, takes down a little bit of the lows, therefore having room for everyone. It is a safe place in this mix. We are all equal here in Logic. Next is the exciter. This is kind of hard to explain because you really have to use your ears to use the exciter because if you turn it all the way up, it's gonna sound like garbage. Really use those ears, boys and girls. I'll do this one for you so you can hear. That sounds good to me right there, but let me show you what would be too much. No, don't do that. Don't. 79 is too much, okay? Stick with like four to seven. The spread, I take out the lower frequency because I don't want to expand the low end. I kind of want the low end to be mono. So I don't want it to be like, you know, both sides, just right down the middle. And then I take out some of the highs as well because you really don't hear anything above 17,000 hertz. The human ear can't really differentiate anything, like any noise from that level, so I wouldn't really boost anything or try to spread any of that sound. I believe this plugin starts out like this. It's really high, but that just doesn't work. So, well, for this mix anyways. So I try to stay low and then I gradually go up 
and I'm, I try to figure out what sounds best to my ears and when I get the sound that I'm looking for then that's when I stop. After that, gotta add this limiter back. I take the ceiling down to two, sometimes three. Uh, for this beat I had it at negative two. And then you just use this gain knob until the attenuation starts to show here. I don't know why but mine does not work so I can't really see when the attenuation meter is moving. See? Nothing. Nothing at all moving right here. So I just have to use my ears and basically this right here to show me when I reach negative two and then I stop moving then. sounds good to me. As you can see that's a lot of plugins to use whereas this one with ozone you just have this one thing and it has everything that you need inside of it already. Let's compare the mix between ozone 8 and the mix that I had with using just stock logic sounds. So here's logic sounds and then we'll go to ozone sounds. <laughs> you mix a master and logic and all while using stock logic plugins so you have zero excuses just kidding if you don't want to mix and master you could probably find a service that does it or you could hire somebody like me check my website for that service i got you anyways i hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys if you have anything else you want me to go over in logic for you i can do it be sure to follow me on instagram and on twitter and i want to shout out these two people for following me and commenting on my latest Instagram posts. And if you want to get shouted out on my next video, be sure to follow me on Instagram and comment. And please be sure to subscribe to me if you haven't already. And if you would, please hit that little bell so you get a notification every single time I post. So that's all I have for you today, guys. I will catch you in the next one. Peace out. And be sure to follow me. Nope, nope, I said follow is subscribe. It's subscribe. Okay.